After you pull in a method of manufacturing and job entry, you can edit the materials for that method. The material then contains the details to accurately track estimated and actual material costs on the current job. Expand the nodes on the job tree view to display the material. Double click on this material node. The job details materials detail sheet displays. You can change several details. Click the part rev button to substitute a different part for this material. You can also change the operation that uses this part. Activate the back flush checkbox to cause this material quantity to issue when labor is reported against the operation. To notify users when the total material quantity is received, select the Alert on Completion checkbox. This sends out a global alert. When this material needs to be listed as a job miscellaneous line in AP Invoice Entry, select the Miscellaneous Charge checkbox. Then select a miscellaneous charge from the list. If this material was placed on the method after the initial job setup, select the Added Material checkbox. You can then track this material change within AP Invoice Entry. The fields in the Quantity Group box indicate how material quantities are used on the method. The Quantity Parent field specifies how much of the material part is required to produce a base unit of the parent assembly. The Required Quantity displays the total estimated material quantity. This value is calculated by multiplying the quantity per parent times the production quantity plus the scrap amount. The Unit Cost field displays the estimated cost per unit of the material. Activate the Fixed Quantity checkbox to indicate a set quantity must be built for this part regardless of the overall quantity on the job. You cannot define scrap on a fixed quantity part. The Scrap Quantity factor can either be a specific quantity or a percentage. This value increases the material requirement quantity. The Find number specifies the characters on the drawing that show where this material is used. This useful reference helps shop personnel know the purpose of the part. The electronics industry uses reference designators to match a schematic to a board layout. If this assembly builds an electronic part, enter this designator in the Require Ref Designators field. If you sell a serial track part to a customer, you may need to reassign this serial number for the warranty. To do this, select the Reassign Serial Number to Assembly checkbox. The fields in the Unit Cost Breakdown group box determine estimated costs of material, labor, burden, and subcontract work. These values are totaled with other material unit costs on the method to determine the job's estimated cost of production. Similarly, the Material Burden fields define the estimated rates for landed costs, like freight and import duties, placed against this material quantity. To divide the material's costs in project analysis, assign an analysis code to it. These codes group material, operation, assembly, and header costs into different categories. A series of checkboxes indicate the source of the material. If this material will be manufactured, activate the Make Direct checkbox. You then select the site that produces this material quantity. When this material is set up through a planning contract, select the Link to Contract box. This checkbox is automatically selected if the material is linked to a contract within Part Maintenance. If this material will be purchased from a supplier, click the Purchase Direct checkbox. Select the supplier and enter the estimated lead time it will take to deliver the material quantity from the supplier. If these materials need to be inspected on delivery, activate the Inspection Required checkbox. Two more purchasing options are available. If you need a request for quote to purchase this material quantity, select the RFQ Needed checkbox. Likewise, activate the Quotes Required checkbox to indicate this supplier must send a quote before you purchase the material. When you finish editing, click Save.